Ryan and this Mike with Apple Irrigation. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to properly winterize a valley center pivot irrigation system. First thing we're going to talk about is the tools and parts that you'll need. Number one is a pail pump. This will be allowed to uh, allow you to pump grease from the uh, container into the gearboxes. Number two, you've got a air pressure gauge. This one happens to be an equalizer, which allows us to equalize the pressure quickly and easily into both tires. Or you can just use a standard air gauge. Um, you need a eight point socket that is nine sixteenths of an inch. An eight point socket has grooves like that so it fits on the square plug. This is used in the center drive of the plug for the center drive and the plug for the gearboxes. Here's a special tool we made to check the center drive oil level. Uh, it's just a washer with a hole that is um, an inch and seven eighths apart. Valley changed the specifications on their center drives and they want the oil level an inch and seven eighths down from the top now. A uh, little oil pan, electric impact with a 7 16 socket, a little bit of never seize, torque wrench with a 7 a socket, valley V loop. You're going to use two different kinds depending on the machine you have. If you have a corner arm, the V lube Ultra Plus, or the V lube Ultra, excuse me, is used. Uh, just in the corner steering gearbox and the corner wheel gearbox and it's got a red color. The V-Lube Plus is a blue color and that's used in the center drives of the, uh, the towers and also the gearboxes. You're going to need some drain seals. You can get two kinds. Uh, one is uh, you can get these individually the individual part number is, um, is 0232001 from your valley dealer, or you can get a pack of 10, which is 0232568. You're also going to need a uh, grease gun, some paper towels, and to put air in the tires, we uh, have a slick little setup, just a simple air compressor and a little Honda generator. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Okay, so on the uh, pivot points, we've either got, we've got uh, four or six research, depending on the type of pivot point you have. There's two on this side and two just on the opposite side. Also, depending on the collector ring that you have, you may have a grease circ under the collector ring, which is right there. That takes one or two pumps uh, throughout the season, just enough to get it to squirt out. Now let's go and talk about the, uh, the pipeline and how to do the pipeline. Most of the systems that we install have a chemigation valve that looks similar to this. Uh, the chemigation valve underneath here has got a plug. It's really important you take this plug out and then reinstall it right away and put some never seize on that plug so it gets, uh, you can easily take it out next year. Now if we come over here, uh, if there's any valves that you have, you want to have these in the center position. Not all the way open, not all the way closed, somewhere halfway open. If you have an underground pipeline, you want to take the cap off of both ends. Uh, this will allow the pipeline most likely to drain down a little ways so it'll get uh, so the water level will get down before we come and uh, winterize. Also at the base of the pivot point there is a plug or a drain. You got to get this plug or this drain out uh, make sure that, that uh, if it's got a valley drain in it, make sure that it's not plugged up.
Okay, here we are at the drive unit, and the first thing we're going to do is drain the water out of the gearbox. The first thing you need to do is actually leave this cover on. We're going to just take our 916 8 point socket, loosen up this plug, and if there's any water in the gearbox, it's going to settle right to the bottom of the gearbox. And if we're good about this, we can do this without leaving any oop here we go that wasn't so good if there was water in the gearbox the uh, water would have came out first okay tighten back up this is a tapered plug by the way so you really don't have to reef on it next step is to take this cap off with a half inch socket and uh, check the oil level. Now we want the oil level just covering up the worm gear. This one you could probably we could probably add a little bit more. Also if you notice water came out of this uh, diaphragm. This is unique on valley gearboxes. It's got a diaphragm in there which keeps a lot of the moisture from getting into the gearbox. So it's perfectly normal to see water up in this area. Push the diaphragm back out, fill her up a little bit more oil, and then you can reassemble. Incidentally, a lot of people think that the oil, or excuse me, the water gets in the gearbox from the sprinkler system. That's not the case. These gearboxes, when they're running, can get uh, over 200 degrees. And the condensation in the gearbox causes that water to condense water from the air to condense um, that diaphragm in the valley gearbox really helps keep most of the moisture out of the oil next step is going to be to check the torque on the wheel bolt each wheel bolt's got to be torqued to 125 foot pounds I've got my torque wrench already set and we'll go along and check each one. Once that's done, we want to check air pressure. Most uh, valley machines have got a sticker on the uh, rim to tell you how much air pressure to put in. This particular tire has got 30 pounds. If you don't find the sticker on your rim, um, you can look in the operator's manual. This one is uh, about two pounds low, so we'll add a little bit of air to it. After the air pressure is done, we're going to want to check the oil in the center drive. Again, leave this plug in, pop this plug out. It's the same size socket used on the gearboxes. Drain just a little bit out, if possible. And then check the oil level. Uh, you'll notice that this oil level is a different color than the Valley Gear Lube. Uh, I'm told when they're new, they just have it's just got a different color in it, but uh, it's supposed to be the same stuff. Now we want to check the level. Um, Valley recently changed the specification of the oil level. Uh, it used to be to the top of the fill plug like that. Now we actually want to drain a little bit down so it's an inch and seven eighths down from the top like that. That's how we use that uh, special dipstick to check that out. We'll drain that later. After that's done, tighten this back up and we'll go up to the top of the tower. Okay, now that we're at the top of the tower, the only thing we have to do up here 
is uh, check the drain. At each tower, we've got a drain right here. You want to take this cap out and you want to make sure that it's not plugged with sand and uh, it's got a little washer like so in. You want to flip this over and use the opposite side. If it's really cracked or it's got a hole in it, you're going to want to replace it with a new one. They're under a buck at your uh, local value dealer. Alright, now let's go to the, the end tower. Okay, so after we've done the drains in every tower, uh, the last one of course is the last tower. On the last tower, there's a couple of things we have to do. Number one, dump the sand trap. You just take this ring lock clamp off, take this cap out, dump the sand out, and uh, make sure you put this back in. A lot of guys leave this off for the uh, winter time. We have problems with birds and things like that getting up in there. After you dump it, put the sand trap back on. Next thing you want to do, of course, is the drain. There's one more drain at the end tower. And then if you have a booster pump, you've got a little tube going to the booster pump box that goes into a pressure switch. Sometimes this little fitting will break off. If this tube is completely full of fluid, it'll break this fitting off. If you just raise it up, jiggle it a little bit to drain it out, that'll help. Also, um, every system that's got a end gun has got a little filter cross. Typically it's down here. We've got a, uh, this is the heavy duty filter kit. You want to, uh, whichever filter you happen to have, you want to take the filter out, make sure it's clean, drain the water out, and uh, reassemble. The final thing you need to do is Make sure that, actually there's two final things. There are drains on the uh, booster pump hose. There's one right there, and there's going to be one way at the end. Very similar to the tower box drains, you want to make sure that uh, those are clear. Also, some systems have got a spray nozzle at the end of the system. We're going to show you that in a second. And last but not least, a lot of systems have this spray nozzle at the end. You're going to want to take that spray nozzle out and make sure that it drains. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video today. If you have any questions or if you're in the market for uh, center pivot parts and service in the western Wisconsin or southern Minnesota area, uh, feel free to give Apple Irrigation a call. Thanks for watching.